So, uh, I am the technical co-founder of a startup called Argo. I'm a programmer. Uh, I write a little bit in JavaScript and Ruby and a few other languages. Just uh, do a lot of the uh, technical decisions at my startup. Uh, and I'm also sort of, I've always been sort of addicted to side projects. I can't keep uh, doing just one thing. And uh, I've done a few little things here and there. Um, and this is the weirdest one and also the biggest one. Um, and uh, it all started out as a Twitter account that I started uh, for a really utilitarian purpose. I felt like I was talking about programming on Twitter more often. And I thought it was boring to my like non-programmer friends, so I started a second account. Uh, and I kept it going for a while. And uh, eventually, I don't know, I got bored talking only just about sharing uh, links and stuff. So I started telling more jokes. Uh, and people really liked that. Um, it uh, started growing in popularity. It's not as, it didn't grow like Pinterest, but it, <laughs> uh, yeah, not yet. Um, but it, uh, it did grow. It has uh, 78,000 Twitter followers now, and they're pretty engaged. Uh, people look to the, the practical dev for random interesting things. Uh, it also evolved. I, uh, we started a website called dev.to, um, which is more, uh, it's a platform for just sharing ideas, kind of like the evolution of the whole thing. But the whole thing is, uh, it started with humor, and that's what kept it going. And this is going to be a weird presentation where I'm going to go back and forth between some of the humor and then some of the story. Uh, so the practical dev is the Twitter account. That's our logo, dev. Uh, and it's been uh, a lot of fun. This is uh, one of the most popular. Uh, Covers uh, I ever made. It was it was the first one uh, I decided to put up there, and uh, it just it just took off, and it really emboldened me to make a lot more uh, of these. And and I can't believe they've just kept coming. Like uh, people assume it's more than one person doing all this, uh, and it is. I have a co-founder, but she uh, I don't know. She, she's I'm only the only one allowed to touch the Twitter account for now. <laughs> um, but, but realistically, I'm just trying to uh, kind of like, it's, it's, it's funny, but there's, there's like a depth to it that I feel like I, I appreciate. I don't know if anybody else does. Um, I really try to just think about like what I'm actually doing and, uh, and how that's different from like presentations I see uh, and like, and, and, and tutorials, and, and every story you hear. Uh, I'm trying to break through the narrative fallacy of programming, the like A to B, because I think there's like a lot of, uh, like it's not integers, there's like a lot of uh, decimals in between each step that like nobody discusses. And, uh, and it's been a lot of fun to just unearth every ridiculous thing I can come up with. Um, <laughs> This is kind of the next step after you've copied and pasted from Stack Overflow. You've got a lot of code. You really uh, don't know where it came from. And uh, it's also the only code that has comments in it, which is good. But, uh, but some days, this is your life. Like, I remember making this on a day where uh, this is all I did all day is Google, and <laughs> Google a few error messages one after another, uh, and it just kept coming. And uh, and I had to I had to express my frustration and and uh, and elation uh, through Twitter. <laughs> to me, this is just it's just more of the process. Uh, I remember what I was doing when I made this one. Uh, I was trying to learn Redux. <laughs> And, uh, and there's a lot of boilerplate, and it's hard, to, it's hard to keep it all together because you can get a lot done just by copying a lot of boilerplate into your project. Uh, and that's often just step zero. And if you're disciplined, you're going to read a lot of the, of the fundamentals of an idea. And if you're not disciplined, you're going to, well, <laughs> well, this is going to be a process either way. But for me, it's often the process. So this is the Twitter account. Uh, it's it's popular. It's it's a little wacky. Uh, that headline says "Get pull your life together." Um, 
And uh, it's not just jokes, but that's, that's the, the best part. Um, but uh, on every day I probably share about seven or eight uh, interesting links from the internet. A lot of the time uh, it's just like interesting Stack Overflow questions. The weird thing is the ones I share that everybody loves are all the ones that got closed on Stack Overflow. So like all the worst Stack Overflow questions are the best ones for the account because they're the ones that are kind of vague and weird and, uh, and cover an issue that like that Stack Overflow like fundamentally hates. So, so this is my job uh, on a <laughs> on a on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we've got we've got business people. We've got to uh, we've got to know what we're doing, um, and uh, and usually that just means like lying about it. <laughs> Uh, and the interesting thing is that the uh, the practical dev is also uh, now a business. It's a incorporated company um, with uh, with a business model to we'll figure out uh, as we go. And um, and so I have to kind of like think uh, about sort of like like I can't be a total goof or else we'll not get anything done. Um, but the business runs because I'm a total goof, so it's a real like, it's a real uh, conundrum there. Uh, so this is, so this is my story. Uh, I <laughs> I dropped out of uh, CS because I didn't really like it, and then I picked it up later. Um, when I was graduating college, I was, at the time, I was dead set about uh, getting into sitcom writing. And, uh, and frankly, if it was an easier field to break into, I might have never become a programmer again. Um, but uh, it's kind of where this all came from, and I think it speaks to the idea that like, a lot of programmers just kind of talk about programming, and they might have a side project, they might have hobbies, they might have other interests. And uh, it's nice when you can kind of pull it all together when you have a side project that you can really be passionate about. And, uh, and for me, like, sharing ideas has always been a real passion point of mine. And uh, and it's not just the, a lot of it's the humor, but a lot of it's uh, uh, a lot of it's just like the uh, the general like discourse. I want to help as much as I can, and uh, and some of the humor doesn't isn't very helpful, but I think a lot of it sometimes is, and uh, it's been really exciting. And uh, here's <laughs> here's a bit more of my day to day. <laughs> so every. Every one of these is basically just what I was doing at the time. Uh, have you seen the Silicon Valley episode where they get into a fight about tabs and spaces? Uh, after that happened, uh, I had to run a poll. Uh, we got 16,000 votes in the poll, which is, which is just like cool. It was like a definitive answer to some extent. It's not very scientific, but, uh, but tabs won. And, uh, and I was purposely vague about what tabs and spaces are because a lot of people will actually write ta click the tab button, but uh, it'll create two spaces. Uh, but it's just kind of fun. Like today I, wrote a, I ran a poll about the pronunciation of the word uh, GIF. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, GIF is in the lead, it's gonna win. Uh, and it's just, it's just, it's just fun to, uh, have, have an idea and get an answer, um, just talk in the community. Uh, last week, for the first time, we hosted a, an hour-long discussion on a topic which the community voted on. It was hiring and getting hired in, in, the, in programming. And uh, the, uh, it was great. Like, people really got it, even though they, a lot of people might associate it with just the humor, but people like, showed up and talked for an hour, and it was really awesome. And uh, tomorrow, the topic, we're doing it once a week. Tomorrow, the topic is getting into Go, the language of Go. And so uh, people are excited to just sort of find out about it. And, uh, and, and it's, like an op it's a real community opportunity, and it's really fun and weird. <laughs> so this is... This is, this is me most of the time. It's also not the only uh, cover uh, about regex. There's a, there's a few different ways you can make fun of the idea. Um, 
uh, yeah, regular expressions are a, uh, a powerful concept that are like terrible and weird most of the time. And, uh, and it's been, it's just been fun because sometimes I, uh, I don't know if I'm the only one with an issue and everybody else kind of is fine with regular expressions. Uh, but I tweet this and it, it got, it gets like 3,000 retweets and it's like, damn, like people, <laughs> people really uh, don't know what they're doing, like me. <laughs> so I think this came shortly after learning Redux. I was an early React.js adopter and, uh, and everything changed every week since adopting it. <laughs> Um, and I've written in seriousness about this topic, and I've uh, made fun of it a lot. Um, I remember, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, <laughs> it, it, being a developer is kind of hilarious. Like, uh, last Tuesday or something, um, I settled on RethinkDB for our project, and then like eight hours later, I see it in the top on Hacker News that RethinkDB, the company, is shutting down. <laughs> Like, I spent like I spent a long time settling on our database. It's important, and like immediately, like the whole thing blows up. And I think we're still going to use it because I think it's going to live on. But it took it was the whole thing, and it's crazy. Uh, this is dev.to, the homepage right now. Um, this is uh, the top articles. Uh, something I wrote, um, just the weekly roundup. The top thing was the rethink TV thing. Uh, probably out of my own bias, that was the top story for the week. Um, and uh, and it's, it's a, you'll see the top two posts are mine, but it's a platform anyone can use and we're sort of growing it that way. Uh, when I was just getting into programming for the first time, I, I create, like everyone, I created a blogging platform and someone smart really dissuaded me from like taking that on as an entrepreneurial project and, uh, and I, I I think I like begrudgingly always wanted to, and this is kind of the uh, the rehash of that. We uh, we built it from scratch instead of using a platform, and it's it's been super awesome. And uh, and we're building out like the thing we want to build, like the discussion platform we want on the web. And uh, and there's a lot out there, but uh, but it's it's been the perfect project because we have this built-in community. There's a lot of inherent respect in what we do, so we can take chances and people get it. And uh, and it's kind of all about just like relating to the community and it's been a, sort of a funny combination between the ongoing software development and the ongoing just like let's have fun and talk about weird stuff. Like hating on languages you don't use. <laughs> Memorizing six git commands. Um, I remember, so there's been, there's a lot of uh, weird allies for this brand on Twitter. Uh, um, Swift, Swift on security retweets uh, a lot of these, which is great. Um, and that's a, that's a parody Taylor Swift InfoSec uh, Twitter account that's, that's really popular as well. <laughs> this is a little more on that topic, <laughs> a little more uh, in, into my life. Uh, I've only ever worked for startups, which is a good, uh, which, which is a good window into all the worst development practices. <laughs> and a lot of the best ones, you don't have a lot of the organizational uh, you know, issues you've got to deal with, but, uh, but there's trade-offs at every step, and that's kind of the fundamentals of the whole thing. <laughs> so, so this is something that I, when I was first really getting into programming, I kind of was like, thought at some point I had to get into hardware too because I was hearing a lot about it. And I got an Arduino and this is exactly what happened. And, uh, and it turns out everybody else has the same story. Uh, so this is uh, an example post on, the, uh, on Dev2. Um, you can see that it's branded at ReactiveConf. And uh, because we've been taking on a lot of uh, cool partners and and doing some uh, some interesting platform stuff. Like, uh, I don't know, I feel like in the same way uh, everyone seems to want to do a blogging platform, it's just like the platform thing in general is just the obvious way to go, at least like it's been impossible not to go that way for me. So uh, I'll be going to Slovakia uh, later this month to uh, just do more reactive comp stuff because they reached out and were like, hey, uh, 
let's do stuff together. We're working with other businesses, like big companies that have thousands of employees are going to be like writing on the platform, and it's all coming out of these stupid jokes. Uh, and it's been a really kind of fun evolution. Uh, this is kind of this is kind of what it takes to build a platform when you don't control your own content, which is uh, most of software development, and uh, and it's just. This is me a lot of the time. It's really easy to come up with reasons not to follow a certain practice. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's like I, I can rant if, if I want about uh, why maybe we shouldn't write unit tests because it's not the right thing, but it's, it's also kind of stupid and ridiculous. And, uh, but it's, it's just like what we do. Uh, this is a message I got today, which I thought was really funny. Um, I've got open DMs, and I got, I got this, like, there's a real weird, like, fandom going on uh, about the whole thing. Like, I like people's tweets, <laughs> and, uh, and I, I, it's just, like, it's just kind of surreal. Uh, in a lot of ways, this is my current uh, status, especially if you're, if you're saying a lot of stuff on the internet, uh, you're, uh, you're opening yourself up to it. I like to think that uh, the bolder I am, or the, the more confident I am with my security, the bolder I can be <laughs> with what I say on the internet. Um, because, and uh, it's just, but it's just kind of like the way it is. I don't know. Um, this is kind of what happens. Uh, I, this is sort of a reference to the, uh, the Bobby Tables classic XKCD, but I thought it was kind of my own take on the whole thing. Um, and sort of just like a play on the on the on the covers. Uh, I think there's like 18 covers in this slide, but I've I've made like 60, and uh, with all sorts of you know like meta sort of things going on. And uh, that's all I have to say uh, today. And uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this talk. Uh, it's fun. It's been a fun journey, and I, I enjoy sharing uh, some of just my insights about how the whole thing went down. Uh, any questions? Uh, thank you for letting us know it's all going to be OK. <laughs> ben, would you make t-shirts? Would I make t-shirts? Uh, yeah, I've made, uh, I've made um, some t-shirts before. We actually, they sold really hot, and uh, people did buy them, but uh, just out of like being too busy with a lot of other stuff, we kind of like cut that out. But yeah, that's in the in the uh, that's in the works, and uh, and the first run was super popular. So totally, uh, I mentioned I do a lot of side projects. The, probably the reason we don't do T-shirts is because I started a t -sh custom T-shirt company at some point too, and I felt compelled to run the whole thing through that. But it's been kind of like hard to maintain the whole thing and do it all together. But yep, that's the uh, that's the plan as well as other merchandise. What's going to come first, your O'Reilly book deal or a lawsuit? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Tim O'Reilly did complain that we about the whole thing in a vaguely legal, thready kind of way, but we uh, that was crazy. I wound up later that day talking to Tim on the phone, um, <laughs> and then later having a meeting with like their whole like a, with their whole uh, branding people and stuff, and <laughs> things seem to be cool, but I like I, I try to be nice to everybody. Um, but I think I've established myself as a parody artist. Like I think it's, I don't like I think it's uh, it's pretty obvious. And uh, but yeah, we're uh, we're not going to start selling books until we are sure that they they'd be cool with that. Uh, but I did speak at uh, I did give a short talk at the um, the last O'Reilly Velocity conference, uh, and uh, and that was kind of fun and surreal and uh, sort of. Uh, an interesting thing to come out of all this. <laughs> yeah, so my... What? Yeah, so I gave it, I gave an Ignite talk at, at O'Reilly and it was essentially just a stand-up routine. And uh, it was actually this exact talk, but I, um, with just the covers and me just like, making jokes the whole time. And um, 
I considered doing that for today, but then with the uh, format of the whole thing, I kind of just decided to instead just tell a more serious story about the whole thing. But yep, that's uh, that's in the workings. But stand-up comedy also doesn't always scale, so like it doesn't scale like you know like I get really excited about the programming part and stuff, and uh, and I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole of of uh, of just making jokes. Um, but the bigger the thing scales, the more I feel like my stand-up any comedy goes further, and it's just really exciting, the whole thing. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know how anything happens. <laughs> uh, like, sometimes there's an idea, and like, sometimes the animal goes first, and then I just want the animal to, like, usually I want the animal's, like, expression to reflect what's going on more so than the animal. Um, like, uh, I don't know, I felt like this serious octopus kind of, like, wanted to be in this context. Um, something about this fish just really told me that it was kind of being weird, <laughs> like, <laughs> awkward. Like, this fish's expression just looks like a fish that's really hoping nobody hacks its code. Um, I, I don't know, I felt like this is the face of somebody making an excuse for not writing unit tests. Yeah. Interestingly, I, uh, when, when I started, first started doing this, I got an email from Eddie Friedman, who invented the whole thing. Uh, she, she created the O'Reilly cover design, and she still works at O'Reilly as like a design a, like executive of some kind. And she told me, uh, she told she told me a few things about it. Like they, uh, they really like they think it does well when the animal's like looking at the at the person, and they've like learned a lot about this. And I took it as actual advice. Like, oh, I, it kind of makes sense. Like the expression of the animal, uh, the 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 sloth on the very first one was really uh, like uh, was really deliberate. Like I felt like that's what a sloth would do, and I like that. And uh, some of them are sort of random. I some. <laughs> Uh, this is kind of like, it's a metaphor of some kind. Uh, cats do well in, in a lot of these circumstances, in the, the like, hate, hating kind of ones, like, uh, and, and then it kind of get like, this is, uh, this is the, the other meme, uh, uh, and, uh, I also, on, on the, on May 4th, I did some Star Wars related ones. Sometimes the animal is the joke, and the, the caption doesn't really mean anything, like, I put one with Jar Jar Binks, and the joke is the caption was whiteboard interviews, and uh, or the the title of, and so Jar Jar told the told the uh, told the joke, and because whiteboard interviews aren't necessarily inherently funny, but the the whole thing kind of made sense, and uh, so I've made a few that totally fell flat, but most of them are have totally have caught on at least, uh, and people people it's fun, people like them. Uh, that was uh, amazing end of the evening. Thank you. <laughs>